TG Geeks, episode 315, March 1st, 2021. Are you a good witch or a bad witch of the West Wing? Hello and welcome to another webcast from TGGeeks.com, where Ben and Keith, the two gay geeks, talk about all aspects of geekdom and nerdery, sci-fi, comics, film, horror, genre, you name it, we talk about it. And I'm Keith Lane, and we're coming to you from TG Squared Studios in lovely allergy schmutz in the throat, Phoenix, Arizona, Mm -hmm. sneezing and coughing and... Yeah, and and I'm Ben Raggington coming to you from hell. <laughs> yeah, we've had I, the we've had the doors open, yes. so all the pollen has all come the in. pollen has come in. Yeah, so we're <laughs> we're just suffering badly. I think that's supposed. So I'm I'm guessing that that little teaser, uh, good witch or wicked witch of the West Wing. Yes, there I, we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, ah, sorry. Okay. <laughs> no, but the good witch, bad witch. Okay, I mean, yeah, it it, well, it works. Yeah, let's get on with it. Prepare for hyperdrive. Meanwhile, in the Hall of Episodes, the two gay geeks are discussing this. Well, in this episode, uh, if you <laughs> hadn't noticed already... We're, yeah, we're going to go down this road again. We're, we're w- one more time, since we finally finished watching the entire seven seasons of The West Wing and also the uh, the special that they did uh, and several other little special deals that they did. So we're going to talk all about that. We have our birthday shout outs, our featured podcast of the week, and we got some feedback and a regular shout outs. And if we have some time in the second segment, we'll figure out something to talk about and our weekly recap as well as our regular shout outs. So, are you ready? Oh, yeah, I'm ready. Okay, let's get on with it. Get on with it! Well, that's <clears throat> oh, pardon me. Yeah, thank you. Good <laughs> lord! Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, 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 Mr. Haney, Mr. Haney, <laughs> we are <laughs> we are going to talk about the West Wing, which was we've talked a lot about. We've, that. we've talked a lot about that. It ran from 1999 to 2006, and for seven seasons. And I I don't know why we. We picked it up. I think it was probably, well, I, well, we'd heard some things about it, but what? not really even when it was running. I, I don't I, know. I remember when the box set came out, and I kept thinking, this is something we need to get, because I had seen only one episode, and I was intrigued. Uh, plus, I love Martin Sheen. Yeah. I, I, think, I think he's fantastic. Yeah, I think that was probably when uh, Grace and Frankie was airing and, and Martin Oh, no, Sheen. this is long before that. No, no, no. I mean, when I finally said, you know, maybe we should watch The West Wing. It's That's, possible. That was, you know, his big thing before The West Wing, uh, for television anyway, a for big a thing long after time. The, after The West Wing, you mean? Yes. Yeah, uh, but I remember seeing uh, boxed sets for, you know, when, every time we go into like Best Buy or something, I would see this big box video set you know, DVDs or VHS back in that day, of of the entire series. And I kept thinking, this is something I need to look at. Yeah, I, and, I, and I just never got into it. But then what, what clued me in now is I, because we're subscribers to HBO Max, and I got an email uh, telling me about all the things that are on HBO Max, and I just had the time. So I went through the email and looked at it and saw that they had the West Wing on there. And I thought, oh, this is the perfect time. Yeah. And so we watched the first episode, and it was like, oh, my gosh, we're hooked from the first one, practically. Yeah, uh, although a bit overwhelmed because it hits you. Oh, my um, God. It, just, it hits the ground running at 120 miles per hour. I mean, exactly. it is just 
it, it it's mind numbing almost. Yeah, and you get accustomed to that. But then there there were other times that I would sit there and I would say, "Oh my God, I, we, you, we've got to stop it for a minute because I have to catch up." <laughs> you know, my mind has to you catch know, up. And it's because they just rattle off things. You know, a mile yeah. a minute. I, it, it was it was very hard for like the first five five episodes. Uh, and even I, with the captions, <laughs> even the captions on, it was very hard. Well, part of it is because you have no idea who's who. Right, you start to kind of guess who each of these people are, what their role is. Who the hell is Leo? Yeah, who, who's Leo? <laughs> who's this, Josh? Who's and and who's this woman? This very tall, this Amazon, <laughs> yes. standing up there, you know, uh, kind of yelling at the press. What's her name? <laughs> so, so part of me is actually oh, but it, it actually that's not the bad part. It's when they're passing each other in the halls, talking. Oh my gosh! Yeah, you know, it, it even coined. <laughs> A phrase I think it's called talk and walk and talk. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that that became a thing, and that's where I where I would get lost. And I remember the series starts off that way, right? And and I'm just completely overwhelmed with what's going on, and to the point where I've actually been toying with the idea of going back. <laughs> well, at least watching the first several episodes again. Yeah. Because now that we're kind of up to speed, I think we could watch those again and then understand exactly what's going on. Exactly. Because we were both just totally uh, knocked on our butts trying to see that uh for the first time without any preparation. Yeah, and I you know, I've talked to a number of people and they said that that was when they really began to uh, investigate politics and and look at yeah. politics a little. And maybe it was just that the our friends are uh, our contemporaries are our age, and we just reached that age where politics meant something or was you know I was in, a little bit involved in politics uh, in high school and just after yeah, I was, but too. Uh, not really. Uh, to any extent that you know the following politics but but there was because there was nothing uh to follow it on other than if you bought a magazine or you watched the news and you know that was three it was stations a different, yeah and, it, was, it was a completely different world back then yeah, uh, now it's your a 24 access, hour news cycle yeah uh, with the internet with news channels being what they are it's so much easier to digest all of that you can argue whether that's good or bad yeah um well, but I, now in today in jest is a better word yeah. than digest because it takes a while to digest some of it. It, it does take a while to digest. <laughs> but uh, it's interesting you should say that because um, you know, after we finished watching it, I remember you and I both went some went through some pretty bad withdrawals when we finished watching yeah, the, the entire the, series. The first couple of days after we watched it, it's like there's this void oh in my, my God, life. There's this void in my. I, I feel like a whole set of friends have just moved they, they've away. Gone. Yeah, and you know because you you get a Attached you to get these accustomed people. to seeing them uh, on a daily basis. Yes, and and it was yeah, it, it it's a very real thing, and you, we I got think a, a, accustomed to their sensory input. input. Yeah, thank <laughs> yes. you, Data. But that's true. That 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 is very true. And I know that we've experienced that with other shows that we've watched and come to an end. But this one really hit hard. Yeah, in, in a way that um, most others have not. Well, because. They, I mean, it's several reasons. Uh, the show itself, they did not shy away from any social issue whatsoever. No. I mean, oh, my God, just in your face, social issues, you know, political issues, world issues, all of those things. And they didn't shy away from that. And they took, um, well, you know. For the most part, they didn't take sides. They would present both points uh, to a. To they a were more liberal than. Yes, yes, but. they were, but they made an effort of at least explaining the other point of view. Exactly, and they and, did. And they it. did have some conservative. Well, they people that were uh, consultants on the yeah, show too, and so. they did it in a rather logical way from time to time that made me sit back and say, "That is not bad thinking." Right. So it, I like the way that they approach that. As far as – I want to go back to something you said a little bit earlier, you know, and that's how people were being turned on to politics. Um, because there was this big void uh, missing everything the West Wing, I did what a lot of other – I did what my mother does. I went to YouTube, 
and just looked up the West Wing and holy smokes, not, I mean, there was just a wealth of material there. Yeah. And there was this 10 year anniversary interview that was done on some news magazine TV show. And almost everybody was there. They were missing a few people. Uh, they right. didn't have Martin Sheen there. Uh, Stocker Channing wasn't there. Uh, but most of the West Wing staff were there, including Richard Schiff. And he talked about how during the, I want to say it was, oh gosh, I can't remember what, it was the very first election that, um, I guess it would be 2008, when that was, that had Biden uh, running for president in the primaries against Obama. Uh, it, it would have to be some other time because they had only ran through 2006. No, I'm talking about, I'm, I'm not talking about the oh, series. I'm oh. talking about... The, the real elections. Oh, the real election. Okay. Yes, the real elections. Uh, Richard Schiff was a Biden supporter, and he was going out. I don't know what, exactly what activity he was doing, but somebody came up to him and thanked him for his portrayal of Toby Ziegler on the West Wing. And he said, because of that show, I am now actively involved and interested in politics. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and and he, he was... <laughs> Is as he relates that story, you see how choked up he gets, yeah. knowing that, and and he didn't care if the person took a conservative or liberal point of view, he was just happy that someone took an interest, right? And I think that's something that um, that pretty much everybody in the West Wing uh, believes. They don't care what your point of view is, as long as you take a heartfelt interest, right, and, in and politics. I, and I I want to skip back and then move forward um talking about when it was over and all of those friends and and the last season some it was in the december episode that aired john, oh. john spencer died yeah. just days after that episode aired and he was he played Leo, and then they had a couple of episodes in the can with him in it. Yeah. But they had to rewrite the the last the back half of the entire season because yeah. he died. Yeah, first they wrote him just like he's out campaigning, he's out doing this, he's out doing that, and then they decided, well, because he had died yeah. uh, in real life, it completely changed how the series was going to wrap up. The yeah. Republican. Uh, the Republican contender was going to win the election originally. Um, Arnie Vinnick, he was going to win the election, played by Alan Alda, <clears throat> and they were going to end the show with the the entire administration turning Republican. But with Jack Spencer's death, uh, they thought, oh, John you know, Spencer. John Spencer. I mean, with John Spencer's death, they thought we can't go down that road. That yeah. that's just too dark. Well, he was such a beloved character. He was, and he had had a heart attack in the previous season and bypass surgery. Yeah. So it just, it made it even more poignant when he died. Yeah. And the season came to an end. And so they decided to turn it around and have the Democratic candidate win instead. And 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 what made it important is that Leo was the vice president nominee. Right. At that time. So that's why they had to take this abrupt change. And... I thought they handled it in a really beautiful manner when yeah. they finally addressed it. I mean, first there was the disclaimer that we got uh, back in er, uh, the episode that aired in the December. The first one in January, yeah. It was, it, was, it was in January with Martin Sheen. Yeah, the first yeah. episode in January. Yeah, he makes this little disclaimer saying, you know, our beloved friend John Spencer just passed away, you know, but, you know, we had the pleasure of working with him. Please watch these episodes and see what a brilliant actor he was. Uh, and then, you know, they, they wrote him off screen. But then they have to come back to it. They have to address them again. Yep. And the way they did it was, I mean, it, it was tear jerking. Yeah. I, I I was really moved horribly, you know, and when I mean horribly, I mean like ugly tears. Yeah. Well, in the very last scene of the entire series with that thing, mm. you know, that started it all. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, it was, it's a very interesting series. They did a special this last um, election season. They brought uh, virtually everybody together, back together, obviously except for John Spencer. Uh, but they brought somebody in to stand in for him, and they d reenacted a um, a full episode, a full episode on stage. But they 
interspersed it with little interstitials, uh, and it was uh, an HBO Max special for uh, benefiting when we all vote. Mm-hmm. And they said, we are best when we all vote. Right. And, and, and again, they didn't all care. Of the actors, yeah. They didn't care what your party affiliation was. They just said that as a nation, we are better when we come together and vote. And I, I was very pleased, very moved at the fact that they went ahead and did this. Uh, it, it was wonderful to watch. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I, I want them to do more of that. <laughs> Part oh of me gosh, does. Yeah. But in the meantime, there is there is so much wonderful content that is out there. Uh, I went down the again. I went down the YouTube rabbit hole and saw something that just made me laugh, and I had to share it with you. Where and this was during the Obama administration. Uh, there was the daily White House <laughs> press briefings, and uh, Allison Janney comes walking CJ out. CJ walks, and, and C, you know she played CJ, who was originally <laughs> and they and the White she was House. getting ready to leave, and somebody said CJ, yeah. CJ. Well, <laughs> ask you a question. Yeah, for people who don't know, <laughs> Allison Allison Janney played uh, CJ, who was the White House Claudia, press secretary, Claudia Jean. Claudia yes. Jean. <laughs> she was the White House press secretary, uh, at least for the first four years or so of the series, and then. So she comes out and she starts uh, having the, the little spiel. Everybody in the press room is laughing. And she even makes an inside joke about singing a song that she did during the series. Uh, and then she then she gives a real speech as to why she's there. She's actually there to benefit a cause. And then somebody starts asking her, who do you think President Bartlett favors in the next president election? She says, I think you already know the answer to that. And then she walked off. You know, and it was all in great fun, and it just it, it just really tickled me to see how here we have a political show that somehow actually managed to make it somehow into pop culture. Yeah, I mean we're we're talking fourteen years, fifteen years, yeah, and it still now. resonates. And well, speaking of fifteen years now, because the first time that Jen Psaki got up in in the thing, and they. It was all over Twitter. It says, thank you, CJ. <laughs> you know, there you go. She's the next CJ. Right. So it, it was really good. And the special was, was wonderful because each one of the characters or each one of the, uh, they did it in pairs and said, we are all best when we all vote. They even had a, um, a special guest of, Samuel L. Jackson, mm-hmm. and no, he didn't. He didn't swear. He didn't swear. <laughs> we were we were waiting for it. <laughs> we were waiting for it. But I'm sure there's an outtake where he did. I'm. But, oh, I want to see it. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, they had Lin Manuel Miranda that did a special um, mm-hmm. one off, uh, and then all of the other characters that were on the show. Uh, Bill Clinton was there yes, as Bill well. Clinton. Yes. Uh, but it, it was a wonderful special. If you got HBO Max, uh, I would highly recommend yep. watching it because it not only touches on some serious issues, it also has humor, and that is the one thing yeah. that I loved about the West Wing oh was my gosh. its humor. Is just yeah. <laughs> And this particular episode... This was one of the best. Yes. It, <laughs> yes. It's called Hartsfield Landing. Yep. And it, Hartsfield Landing is in New Hampshire, and mm-hmm. they are the very first ones to vote. They vote at 12.01 um, and on Election Day, and their 42 votes are counted, and they are, you know, first in the nation to vote. And, and, and it's, according to the series, they are regarded as the little voting district that actually... They have predicted the outcome of the national election every every you know every four years. Uh, yeah. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But, but yeah. I think it's really wonderful that they do that. And so yeah, we have this episode, and something really juicy happens in it. <laughs> A couple of things, but you you get to see some of the humor, and and there's some funny things that really happen throughout the series, and you get to know the characters and their personal lives and. Mm-hmm. The personal struggles that they go through, and it just these people are very human. There, yeah. there, no one is infallible here, yeah. and I think that's what makes the show so relatable to us. Yeah, and it, I would encourage anybody to go look at the West Wing. I, I know that it's on HBO Max. It may also be on Amazon Prime. It's but possible. You may have to pay for it to, you know, but. 
it is well worth the watch. Uh, yeah, how, how, I, I would encourage anybody. How long did, that, we, we got through that in, what, a few months? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because we at some points on weekends, we were doing like five episodes a day. Yeah, because I, I don't think we started watching it till in January sometime. I don't even remember when we started watching it, but we we just mainlined through that baby in no time flat. Yep. It was absolutely outstanding. I love the show. Part of me wants to at least watch the few first few episodes again. Yeah. And, and I really <laughs> think this is a – and I, I wonder, is this an episode that has rewatchability to it? Yeah. I wonder well, if that series does. We'll have to see. It, it might be fun to kind of take a revisit in a couple of years to see if we can watch it again and enjoy it as equally uh, going through. Or is is the magic of this show the surprises? Right. Well, there's definitely a lot of surprises. They had a lot of cliffhangers and twists. And, oh my that god! I twists did not and turns. And then it was like, oh my god, are they ever going to wrap up this little mini arc? You yeah. Know, they spread it out over seven episodes. <laughs> I can't imagine waiting week to week to see what's going to happen. Oh yeah. You know? um, <laughs> uh, right. Donna and Josh. The entire that, series. The entire series. <laughs> they stretch that thing out. How dare they? Oh but it's God. a good thing they did because it worked out. Yeah. Otherwise, they would have jumped the shark on it. And I don't see that this series never jumped the shark. No. It, 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 it was, was wonderful. I I highly recommend it. If you have any interest in, in government uh, and how it functions. Yeah. And th- that was the other thing. Uh, it, it While some people may have some quibbles with it, uh, it really kind of gives you some idea of what goes into policy making you know making laws getting stuff passed what goes on in the the white house in congress all of these things yeah. all of the the manic meetings and the art and, of compromise exactly. and there is and and you realize that in order for anything to be passed in this government there is so much compromise that has to happen you don't realize that sitting on the outside like we do, you know, Joe Q citizen, you have no idea what's going on. Yeah. Um, and, and I wish uh, there was greater accessibility so that we could understand why, why, why is my representative doing this? Why right. are they voting this way? And, and this series, I think, gives a very good insight as to why did this issue go this particular way? Why did they right. vote in this particular fashion? It's it's a very educational show. It may not be 100% accurate, well, but it and, is and very enlightening. I think uh, today, in today's climate, politics has changed drastically since uh, the good old days of the West Wing. But, uh, you know, I mean, for good or, or bad, it uh, it is what it is, and we, we have to live with what we do. But we can make a difference because we do vote and we have a voice mm-hmm. to talk to our representatives, to talk to our senators, to send, you know, uh, send a note, to be do involved, whatever, be involved. Exactly. Even on a grassroots level. Exactly. Be involved. And, and I think that's the big message of the West Wing. Fantastic show. I could not say uh enough about it yeah and that's it for the west wing maybe we're, we're not going to talk about the west wing anymore <laughs> until we watch it again until we watch it again oh we'll probably say it again. probably say, has something else to say next week watch. exactly <laughs> you don't need to hear their identification they're the two gay geeks they can go about their business move along Well, here are a few selected birthdays for March 1st through March 7th, 2021. God, we're into March already. Already. Ron Howard. Little Ronnie. Little Ronnie, actor, director, born in Duncan, Oklahoma. No, where's Duncan? Just uh, south of Oklahoma City. Ah. And was friends with Andy Griffith from the time he was six until Andy's death in 2012. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, Brian Grazer and he are Imagine Entertainment. And uh, for one of the reunion of one of the shows, I, I think it was Mayberry RFD, uh, Don Knotts said uh, of him at a reunion, we call him Mr. Howard now. <laughs> <laughs> and before- well, he has several <laughs> awards. So, yes, you can call him that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Instead of Ronnie. <laughs> but um, he, before his dad's death, he would cast him in virtually every... Every movie that his he dad ever made. and his mom a- and his mom yeah. and his brother yes <laughs> yep yes so. he he always put them in into the films uh, 
he, he had no problem doing that. Yep. Well, I mean, his entire family, they're established actors already. Oh, yeah, anyway, exactly. So he had no well, problem pulling them in. I mean, my gosh, you, we watched that one uh, Night Gallery episode or where Clint Howard was yeah. in it, and Rance Howard was the cameraman. <laughs> well, but Rance, as I said, is it was already an established actor. I mean, he shows up as John Sheridan's dad in Babylon 5 exactly. several times. Yeah. So, and then we have Lupita Youngo. I love her. She's actress, 12 Years a Slave. She was um, Maz Kanata in uh, Star Wars mm. and also Nakia in Black Panther. Yes. She was born in Mexico City. No. Her father was a, a visiting lect- lecturer uh, during that time in Mexico City, and they're from Kenya. Ah. And she speaks. Uh, Swahili and English and Spanish and and something else. So, it's just a, and she's a fabulous actress. She really just is. I, fab, I just fabulous. just love her. Yep. And today would have been my dad's eighty first birth, eighty fourth wow. birthday, in nineteen thirty seven. I think he was born. Then we have Steve Robinson, a Facebook friend, and E M Knowles, Aaron Knowles. Happy birthday, Aaron. March the 2nd, Karen Carpenter. Oh, left us way too singer soon. Singer with her brother Richard. They were the Carpenters. Uh, Paul Williams wrote Rainy Days and Mondays for her. She, well, that and, song is yeah. so iconic. Uh, and actually, there's a lot of songs that they oh did that, that, were, that became iconic oh, because of them. I had, I had an eight-track tape of the, car, the best of the Carpenters. I love something. the Carpenters. Yeah. You know, and one thing that a lot of people don't realize, because she didn't do this much in the, the latter half or latter portion of the Carpenters' career as a duo, she was a very solid drummer. Yep. Actually, they they started, she and Richard both were involved in a number of groups, and there was one group that they had with a friend where she played drums, Richard played piano, and a friend of theirs played uh, the bass and also the tuba. And he decided that there was no future in playing the bass, so Mm. he left the group, and then it was... Just Karen and Richard. She collected Disney memorabilia. No. Yeah. And she sadly died at the age of 33. Oh, from way too Heart young. failure caused by anorexia. Yeah. She she was she had mental illness. Yep. For Sad. those that that are experiencing some sort of mental health issue around food and any kind know, of eating disorder. Eating disorder, anorexia, bulimia, whatever, there is help. Mm-hmm. Please seek help. Then we have Theodore Geisel. Dr. Seuss? Dr. Seuss, yes. Also known as Dr. Seuss. He wrote more than 60 children's books. How the Grinch Stole Christmas, among other television specials. I mean, a number of television specials. He died in 1991. Yeah. At the age of 87. He did, yeah. I know I, I tell this story every year when, when we bring up his birthday, but one of my fondest memories... Um, is I'm, I'm, I'm a child. I, I must be like six, seven years old. And my mom is reading to me and my sister uh, a bedtime book. And she's reading Fox and Socks. <laughs> and the tongue twister that comes out of that one becomes so unbelievably long and utterly ridiculous that at, the, at that age, I remember doubled over in laughter as my mom is reading it to us it, it was just the most insane thing well you know that that was the the hook of about dr seuss and the crazy rhyming techniques and tongue twisters that he came and, up with and the making up of words oh yeah <laughs> then we also have uh, facebook friend darren bergstad Matt Hayes, filmmaker, and Mark Ross, a filmmaker in Las Vegas. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. March 3rd, James Doohan. He was the very first Star Trek actor I ever met. Uh, he was Scotty on Star Trek. Really? Was yeah. he Scotty Was or he Bones? He was, was Scotty. Or was who? Was DeForest Kirk? Kelly was Bones. <laughs> Please, leave this house. <laughs> Exactly. He was uh, in World War II. He landed at Normandy on D-Day and was nearly killed just shortly thereafter in a hail of bullets. That uh, He took three to his leg, uh, one removed one of his fingers, right, and one hit his chest. Oh! And he nearly, he would have died had 
he not had a cigarette case that his brother had given to him. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. It was um, truly amazing, uh, that, that little story. I, I saw that and I said, I have to put that in there. But uh, And then his, what, didn't his ashes go to space? Yes, they did. Yep. Uh, or some of his ashes, anyway. Then we have Perry Ellis, fashion designer. Brought about a, a quite a change in menswear in the late 70s and 80s. Was in a relationship with a lawyer friend who he made president of the licensing arm of his brand. And... Uh, they, they both actually died from complications of HIV, mm. but just before um, he got ill, he had a uh, daughter <clears throat> via artificial insemination with uh, oh, Gallagher was her last name in 1984. And uh, the, their daughter, Tyler, uh, in 2011, released a line of handbags as Tyler Alexandra. Oh, handbags. indeed. Yeah. He bought a home for for them and supported them and, and did all kinds of things mm. because he wanted a child. So he died in 1986. And then we have uh, our cat sitter, Raven Ashford. Happy birthday, Raven. Well, she was until well, the, pan- yeah. the, great, the great pause. Yeah, until the great pause. Yep. Uh, March 4th, Chaz Bono, Bono, actor... Son of uh, Sonny Bono and Cher is a trans man, outspoken, was uh, a uh, spokesman for GLAAD mm-hmm. for years. And then we have Catherine O'Hara, I actress. I love her. Part of the uh, SCTV troupe mm-hmm. that has made so many different shows, Best in Show, A Mighty Wind, etc. She is a fabulous musician, Oh, too. my gosh. Yeah. A lovely singing voice. And so many Schitt's Creek and so many others, Home Alone, Nightmare Before Christmas, uh, Beetlejuice. Yeah. I mean, oh my gosh, you, you just, wow. Un- unbelievable. And then we have Chris Squire. Oh, one of the most amazing bass players ever. For Yes, and uh, he adopted Phoenix as his hometown. Yes, he did. And Actually, it was more East Valley. Yeah, uh, I well, think he was yeah. closer to like Chandler, Gilbert area, but generally Phoenix, yes. Yeah. And uh, he died at the age of 67 from leukemia. Leukemia, I know. Yeah. What what a tragic waste. Exactly. Because the guy had a lot of music still left in him. Yep. Ward Kemble, animator, director, one of Walt Disney's nine old men, uh, was the one who got Walt into uh, Hooked on Trains. Yeah. And uh, had a full-sized working train in his residential backyard. He had three acres in San Gabriel and had a, a working train... And isn't that the one that's now in Paris, California? Yes. Yes, he has. I think, uh, did the barn make it over there? I, the barn may have gone to the... Um, uh, up at Griffith Park? Griffith Park, but uh, the trains that he had went to uh, uh, the Paris, California. And he uh, actually usually animated the trains in, uh, in yes. the Disney features, as well as some of the rather cartoonish characters like Lucifer. Lucifer. I knew you were going to go down that one. <laughs> lucifer has got one of the best scenes in all of Cinderella. <laughs> yes. You have to watch this cat because there's one moment that is just... The cat has this really manic moment that you say, that's Ward. <laughs> yep. And uh, the number five locomotive at Disneyland, a narrow gauge uh, locomotive, is named the Ward Kimball and has a stylized Jiminy Cricket on the light box uh, mm-hmm. because he was the animator for Jiminy Cricket. Then we have uh, Facebook friend Justin Reed and Kristen Rowan. March 5th, Hector Villalobos. He was a Brazilian composer, classical guitarist. His etudes for classical guitar are dedicated to Andre Sokovia. Indeed. Yes. And his uh, Bacchianas Brasileiras is his most known piece uh, that... Uh, it, it's really a fascinating. I'm just thinking set if, of songs. If if, if mm-hmm. his if some of his music is dedicated to Segovia, it's got to be just a nightmare to play. Yep. And then we have Matt Lucas, actor, out gay man, Little Britain, Doctor Who. Yeah. Uh, he has alopecia. Yes, and he that's does. Why he is always bald and has no eyebrows or anything else. But uh, so he's turned it into a fashion statement. He certainly has. Then we have Paul Blackthorne, actor, Arrow. 
uh, Dresden the Files. Dresden is, Files. That's how, how we how he, got introduced yep. to him. I wish. Wow. I, I was so sad when they didn't pick that back up I for a know. second season. They were building into something really big, yeah. and then the show just ended. Yep. March 6th, David Gilmore. Another one of my favorite musicians. Guitarist for Pink Floyd. He has a collection of vintage aircraft. Yes, he loves to fly. Yep, and ha- lives on a boat on, on the River Thames. Yes, he does. He has a, <laughs> he actually has a studio that is, it's, it's just a little tiny home studio that he has inside there. Uh, and uh, I think much of the Division Bell and the subsequent studio album, The Endless Dream, was recorded in his houseboat. Oh, cool. Then we have Eddie Deason, actor and voiceover. Oh, my God. He'd done more voiceover than he's done anything else. He was uh, Mandrake on Dexter's Laboratory and the know-it-all kid on Polar Express. Ah. That's Eddie Deason. Yes. (laughs) Very annoying. (laughs) And then we have one of our very first listener, Claire O'Leary. Happy birthday, birthday, Claire. Claire. We love you. Thank you for listening to us. And Jenny Presnell and Karen Clark Foth. Happy birthday. March 7th, Wanda Sykes, actress, comedian, came out in uh, 2008 at a marriage equality event. Uh, was a, be, After she graduated college, she was a procurement officer for the NSA. Wow. <laughs> the National Security Agency. Yes. Okay, that's but, a far stretch from being the comedian she is yeah, now. Yeah, but she she came from a military family, to ah. that, so that's uh, probably why that happened. And then we have Maurice Ravel, composer, arranger, contemporary of Debussy uh, in France. Uh, best known uh, composition was L- Bolero. Yep. And his arrangement of Mozorksky's pictures at an exhibition is the most celebrated one. is is still used today and the most commonly performed. And in the 1920s, he saw that recordings records uh, could have an, a tremendous impact on bringing music to a wider population, and embarked on numerous recording projects. Now, whether he where he played the piano and also conducted, so mm-hmm. very. Quite the visionary. Quite the visionary. And then we wind up with Facebook friend uh, Glenn Schambach, who is the Grand Arbiter. And that's it for the birthdays this time. Technorama, the podcast for geeks, because geeks are better than cool. You don't hear someone say, get away from me, you cool person. Who's going to have their 65-inch home theater system installed by the cool squad? Not me, that's for sure. How much cool cred do you have? Not enough to care about. Think you'll find any canned unicorn meat at thinkcool.com? It's just a part domain name. They don't even have roadkill in a paper cup. That's why you need to start listening to Technorama, because that's what geeks do. Go to chuckchat.com and listen to Technorama before you turn cool. Go give a listen to our friends Chuck and Craig over at Technorama Podcast. They release on Wednesdays, and they also do a live recording, uh, I think, Facebook or on YouTube. Uh, they do it on I, Facebook. I, uh, both, I think. Yeah. So go listen to them. I'm Daniel Radcliffe, and I believe that reaching out for help is the bravest thing a person can do. If you are struggling and need support, call the Trevor Lifeline at one 866 488 Seven three eight six. It's free and confidential, and trained counsellors are there to listen twenty four seven without judgment. To learn more about the Trevor Project's life saving work for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or questioning young people, go to thetrevorproject.org. We want to give a shout out to the Joshua Tree Feeding Program. Uh, it, it's near and dear to our heart. We have a, a number of friends that are involved with that program, and it is worthy of your support. They're a 501c3 nonprofit food pantry for the HIV and AIDS community in Maricopa and Pinal counties. They offer a place where clients can come select a wide assortment of nutritional foods to take home. They set it up just like a store. It's, it's a great 
you should see their offices and see the way they set it up. They usually post something on Twitter as well as Facebook at Joshua Tree. They set it up like a store so the clients can go in and they can pick and choose the food that they want. And it empowers the clients so that no food goes to waste. They don't just dump a box of food on them. They also have some uh, supplements and pet assistance program where they have uh, pet food and other uh, accoutrements for pets. And they are worthy of your support. Please consider supporting Joshua Tree either through a single gift or a monthly recurring gift. You may also consider becoming a Pearl member for $30 a month as a gift. For joining, they will send you a handmade Pearl pen. Go to jtfp.org. Did I get that out of, out of whack? I think I did. I think I got things out of whack because we're supposed to be doing our feedback right now. Oops. We? There we go. That's the right word. Or the right. <laughs> By this point in the episode, I've lost it. <laughs> now it's yes. Feedback. Now it's, there we go. This is this is the feedback time. <laughs> These are the article. Uh, this is the feedback. <clears throat> From several articles that we ran on our website at tggeeks.com, and the links for each of these articles will be in the show notes for this episode number 315 at tggeeks.com. Starting with, regarding This Got Made, hosted by Carlton Tetley, Season 2, Episode E, The A-Team, Issue Number 1, from Hamish Downey, he simply says, I love these. We all do. <laughs> yes. And I just saw a post from Al that he went to a comic book store and uh, said, where's all the crap that nobody wants to buy? <laughs> and he picked <laughs> up another treasure trove for This Got Made. Oh, dear. <laughs> I can't wait to see what he's got to say. <laughs> yeah, there was uh, Francis of Assisi superhero or something no. like that. Yes. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> okay, I have to see that. Yep. <laughs> I've got to see that. That'd be fantastic to see this Franciscan monk as a superhero. I can't wait. Moving on, regarding Sisters in Crime opens submission for the inaugural Pride Award. Got a comment from Jeff Baker, who's an author. He writes, wow. And then and th this starts off the uh, Jeff Baker segment of the show. Yes. Uh, regarding TG Geeks episode number 309. Well, Jeff has several handles on Twitter as well as... As uh, well as YouTube. Uh, as yeah. YouTube, so several different types. Yeah, but, but these, we, we, it's all Jeff. It's all Jeff. <laughs> uh, so he comes back with, and this first part was under a different name on YouTube, and he writes, Wonderful. I looked up the book. Now, we should point out, we, we actually interviewed an author for that. Um, and he says, wonderful, I looked up the book, and I hadn't realized that Monaris is based out of my hometown in Wichita, Kansas. And then he switches, and he posts something else, somewhere else, under his real name. Oh, do you two know of the late fantasy writer Tom Remy? Many of his characters are LGBT, and he was writing in the 70s. He died at 42. His birthday was January 23rd, and that's what made me think of him. There's an anthology, San Diego Lightfoot Sioux of most of his short stories and a novel, Blind Voices, which may not be a polished draft. In the short stories, when he's on his game, he's excellent. Cool. I yeah, didn't see look that, that comment. Moving on, regarding TG Geek's number th issue, bleh, episode 310, got a comment from Jeannie Koch. We wished her a happy birthday, and she says, thanks for the birthday wishes. And then we got a comment from Arkel. He says, glad to see more movies like Haymaker, because we interviewed uh, the lead actress for that series, or that, that movie, I'm sorry. Uh, he says, glad to see more movies like Haymaker being out there. As YouTuber Jesse Gender discussed in a recent video, the TV side of the business has been doing pretty good at trans representation, relatively speaking, while the movie side has a long way to go. How Nomi... She was the lead actress. Described this movie reminds me of why I loved Bit, a vampire movie from last year that also has a trans actress playing a trans character, but her transness is not the whole of her character. Now, in all honesty, I probably wouldn't have watched Bit had it not starred Nicole Maines, who plays my precious cinnamon roll Neonal on Supergirl, but I'm glad I did. <laughs> And then we got a comment from Haymaker on Twitter, and they write, thank you. And then, uh, closing off, 
Uh, this is regarding Ben's breakdown. WandaVision 3 episode thoughts. Arkle strikes again. He says, lots of writers and directors over the years have tried to do what they think it means to make something Lynchian, as in David Lynch. But WandaVision is the first project I can think of that actually seems to get what that means. I leave it to smarter circles than me, though, to explain why that is. I'm not even really a critic. I talk about movies on my main YouTube show, but those aren't reviews. Those are just initial reactions plus jokes. (laughs) And that is our feedback for this week. And if you want to leave a comment on anything that we publish, whether it's an article or it is one of our episodes, you can do that on our Facebook page. You can do it on Twitter or on the article or page itself on our uh, website. Hello. What? What's our website? <laughs> TGGeeks.com. Yeah. Or you can do it on uh, Instagram as well. We also have a listener feedback line. We want to, to hear from you. If you have a comment that you feel like expressing with your own voice, you can call our listener feedback line at 469-TG-GEEKS. That is 469-844-3357. And please play, play nice. nice. Now it's time for that sound. We are huge supporters of independent creators, whether they're filmmakers, comic book artists, writers, or others. Please support those independent creators in your lives, the ones that you know. Check out their Etsy pages, their web pages, their Twitter pages, Instagram, anywhere you can find them. They are um, needing to to sell some of their stuff because the conventions haven't happened this last year or up. this year. Yeah. It, we might get so something at the latter half of this year, know. but if you don't buy something or support them or talk to other people about them, they may actually go away. And that would be a, a sad thing. Some, there's some incredible independent creators uh, out there. So check them out and please support them. <laughs> If you are trans or are questioning your gender identity, and if you are in crisis or are feeling isolated and need someone to talk to, or you know of someone in a similar situation, there is a special hotline just for you. The hotline is provided by translifeline.org and staffed by trained counselors who are transgender themselves. The hotline in the U.S. is 877-565-8860. In Canada, it is 877-330-6366. Or you can go to translifeline.org to learn about the important work they are doing. Please reach out for help. You are not alone. Yeah, baby. They're like two gay geeks. They're together, you know. They're two gay guys and they're geeks. Is that okay? Well, I do have something. You do? I have one little thing, too. Okay, so. you go for first. You go first. I, I just want to say that um, if you are a supporter of Katie Edwards and the oh yes. uh, the tarot sequence novels, or you like his stuff, you might want to check out on Twitter a, a little um, artist that named Jake Shandy. Jake is, Shandy is great. He has done some incredible work on the characters. Uh, he has a, a, a coffee.com. You can buy him a coffee or also has a Patreon. And mm-hmm. he, he actually does some uh, stories and work himself on, I can't remember where it's. Yeah, he's got his own horn. sort of, yeah, he has his own fantasy series. Yeah, so check him out. Uh, he's done some really great work. Yeah, I love what he's done for um, Katie's you know, uh, stuff yeah. uh, regarding the tarot sequence. Uh, yeah, I got a little something. Um, now, I've got an article that will be coming out um, this coming Tuesday. Yes. Three episode thoughts on this series that Keith and I are presently watching called Secrets of Sulphur Grove. So, Sulphur Springs. Sulphur Springs, not Sulphur Grove. I, I know. It's Secrets of Sulphur Springs. Sorry, I don't have the title right in front of me. Uh, so I will be giving my thoughts on that, but... We just finished watching episode four as of this morning, and I'm just kind of curious, what are some of your initial thoughts? Now, remember, this is a series that was designed and created for pre-teens, not necessarily yeah, adults. Yeah, pre-teens and teens. Yeah, it, it certainly has that feel. I, uh, it's interesting, 
uh, to be an adult to watch the sh- the program, but it's not all angsty as in you know teen angst. But there is uh, some interesting um, things going on, mystery, shall we say, mm-hmm. at this Sulphur Springs, and the adults have something to hide, obviously, and then these kids go off on this adventure. So it's it's really kind of fun. I like the fact you said it's not <clears throat> angsty because that's one of the things that really just destroyed uh, what I think the series was lock and key. Oh, my God. Aside from just some really horrendous writing. Yeah. But, yeah, it got angsty. And it's like, okay, we're done yeah. with this show. <laughs> Middle of an episode, we qu- stopped watching. Yeah, we did. <laughs> said, nope. Yeah, we turned anymore. it off. Said, no, it just reached <laughs> idiot plot. Yep. So, but... Yeah, too many I, times, <laughs> way too many times. Yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm enjoying it so far. I'm very intrigued to see where it's going to go. Well, the interesting thing is that the producer or the creator actually has written for daytime television, so she's very accustomed to episodic, you know, archy type things mm-hmm. going on. So, and she may have wanted to write for children now instead of writing for and adults. Do go down the fantasy mystery. Uh, road, if you will. Uh, I find it very enjoyable, and I would say this: if 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 you've got kids that might enjoy this kind of yeah. thing, I would recommend. I, I would recommend the show to them. It's yeah. on Disney Plus. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I would recommend it because, and I'm just going to go ahead and reveal one thing that I write in my article, and that is the character of Harper Dunn. Oh my gosh, is a, is dynamite. <laughs> she is. She, she is, is something dynamite. Else. I Absolutely. love her, and and I would say that you know even you know, there there are a lot of really questionable role models on television. That's a positive role model in my opinion. Absolutely, I think she's fantastic. Yep. <laughs> It's time for our weekly review. These are the articles that we ran on our website at tggeeks.com, and the links for each of these articles will be in the show notes for this episode number 315 at tggeeks.com. Starting with Sunday, February 21st, Nudie Chupacabras number 36. Nudie Chupacabras? Nudie Chupacabras, that's right. Nudie? Nudie, yeah. (laughs) Nudie Chupacabras. No, nerdy. (laughs) Nerdy Chupacabras number 36. On Monday, the 22nd, Nudie Geeks. No. Yeah. You see what you got no, me doing? No, you don't want to see Nudie Geeks. No, you don't want to see Nudie Geeks. No. <laughs> TG Geeks, episode number 314. On Tuesday, the 23rd. Be- oh, no, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Ben's gay breakdown. I, I almost went someplace that would have been just very scary. And everybody would have had to pluck their mind's eye out. Ben's gay breakdown. Easy and just ask him. These are two independent short films that I reviewed that I found on YouTube, and they're both absolutely brilliant. On Wednesday, the 24th, San Gabriel Valley LGBTQ Center presents LA slash San Gabriel Authors Series. On Thursday, the 25th, Twin Peaks, Silence of the Lambs, and Garbage Pail Kids Apparel Now at FrightRags.com. On Friday, the 26th, Hamish Downey's News Sushi, number 112, Morsels of News from Japan and Beyond, or is that Nudie Sushi? Yes, Nudie Sushi. And then on Saturday the 27th, Arizona Opera to premiere new concert series, Arizona Arias, excuse me, on Sunday, March 16th. And that's where we ran on our website at teachgeeks.com. And no, there are no nudies on there. I was going to say, (laughs) Arizona Opera premieres nude concerts. Oh, God. (laughs) No. Have a couple of shout outs that we need to make. First, to the Arkle Times Post Dish. You're still laughing. I, am. I could take this into some very dark places. Watch out. The Arkle Times Post Dispatch News, which is put up by the human Arkle Brian Weber. You can find the Post Dispatch News by finding him on Twitter. Do that by searching for Arkle at A R K L E. And while you're at it, Go to YouTube and find his Arkle Studios there. Uh, he's got Brian has a number of projects: his Shameless Cash Grab series, his Rants vs. Zombies series, which has officially ended, but you can still listen to all of the past episodes, as well as his game videos of Trick and Treat and Star Trek Online. Yeah, you should go and and watch some of his stuff and and give it a like. Yeah, do that. 
We also want to give some shout outs to a couple of Facebook groups for allowing us to post our episodes and relevant articles on their pages. First, two gay geeks after hours. When I approached them, at least the moderators, and said, can we share our stuff, please? They said, please share away. The URL is facebook.com slash group slash gay geeks after hours. And then to the gay geek for all of the same. And the URL is facebook.com slash group slash the gay geek. And as always, we must give special thanks to their moderator, Jeremiah Reeves. Thank you, Jeremiah. And we can be found in several places. Uh, as well as on our website and iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, Stitcher, Amazon Podcasts, which is part of Amazon Music, their new thing, as well as where other fine podcasts can be found. You can also check us out on sci fi radio.com. Or is it dot com? Yeah. Sci fi. Yeah. I think so. And they've changed their name. They were Krypton Radio. But we are featured on Tuesdays at 3 a.m. and 3 p.m. Pacific time. And you can listen to their other uh, content. They are a 24-hour geeky internet sci-fi radio station. Please rate us and review us on iTunes. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> And that should do it for this episode of TG Geeks Webcast. Be sure to check out the article for this webcast episode. We'll have several links on the page. And remember, you can comment on our Facebook page or our website, tggeeks.com, or you can leave us a voicemail at 469-TG-GEEKS. That is 469-844-3357. From TG Squared Studios, I'm Keith Lane. Thanks for listening. Please be kind to yourself and those around you. Stay home, stay safe, stay sane. Peace. Cheers. <laughs>